I know sometimes you want to give up because you're tired and you're fed up, but joy comes in time. Don't get weary. You got to endure because one day you'll suffer no more. Let him give you peace. Let his wisdom give you guidance. Mm -hmm. Give all your worries to him. I'm trying to tell you because I've been there. And by his grace, I'm still here. Because you got to hold on. Don't you get weak. You can hold on. Don't you give up. Be strong. You don't have to cry. Just hold on. We can make it. Psalms 97. Okay. I want you to tear. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Welcome back hey. to the Two Familiar Podcast. I am Marlene Ariel. Unfortunately, we do not have Miss Tashina Tishbi, Sheena B, all the all the sheets and all that. We won't got her today. We have a very, very special guest, Milwaukee's finest, the you know, the most famous oh. that I've ever met. <laughs> we have my friend Savion here today. Savion, aka okay. Savio Baby, okay. aka. Okay, okay. So we got my friend Savi on here today because you know I've had these a few of these topics on my mind for a long time, mm. and I just felt like you're the perfect person to talk to about. So we could just hop in if you're ready to hop in. Okay, I know that's all right. Let's dive right in. How was your week? Let's mm. talk about that first. How's your week been going? Even though it's this early in the week, but honestly, I'd be forgetting the days. Truly, Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> See, see, because it feels like Thursday already. Sometimes it just be heavy. Mm -hmm. Going into Thanksgiving, I've been thinking about that a lot. Yeah, you know, I called my grandma yesterday. Like, you cooking? Because she usually cooks. Mm -hmm. She said, not this year. This is the first year that she said, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on somebody else's plate to take them, which says a lot so, for are her. You, for are her. you helping? I'm not. Okay. You just come to eat. <laughs> I had took my dad to the doctor today, and his nurse was even like, I ain't cooking this year. She was like, I got a second job, and I, I picked up. Like, I don't even want to be around. And I'm like, nobody want to be around? Everybody like, oh. leave me alone this year? What's going on? For real? Are we oh. thankful this year? What, what happened? I mean, are you? I am. Always. I'm not cooking this year, though, but. Yeah, um, I don't never cook. Yeah. I did last year and the year before. And then my friends and Tashina this year are like, yeah, if you. If I no <laughs> ma'am, be with your family and your loved ones. <laughs> Cause I'm not doing it. I can't do it. They be stressing me out. Oh, you, you did say you cook. Yeah, Actually, I could. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just down. Oh, I just bake. I, yeah. You a good baker though. Thank you so much. They yeah. Them cookies though. So they was they was, Those they was good. Though. Yeah. So the first topic today that I wanted to talk about was kind of just navigating very um white spaces mm. um and in particularly i want to talk about code switching which mm. if people don't know what code switching is in my kind of words it's not the true definition but this is just what i feel like it is it's just a way that black people kind of change our behavior and our expressions our appearance sometimes to comfort other cultures usually white people in exchange for things like job opportunities or quality service and not just black people yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyone can code switch. Primarily, it is people of color, minorities to fit into those white spaces, but really to make someone else feel more comfortable mm -hmm. is how I usually go about it. You know, like how we talk. We work together, if y'all didn't know. Yes, we do. Yeah, well, we, we do. did. We still do. A little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it does feel like we need to change tone or change. Mm -hmm the words that we use um, to fit into that space. And that's, you know, code switching. It can be a lot. Yes. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, are you your true self? Can you be your true self at that time? Right. And but it does also, I don't know, can make you feel safe too. I agree with then It's almost like, I feel like I never get the chance to show up mm. truly as myself. Like, I feel like, the person that they meet at that interview and the person that they hire is that's T. I'm Tamir. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we are like, I show up bubbly. I'm happy. I want to learn. I want to da, da, da. And then they, they see me work and I'm, I'm nonchalant stuff really don't bother me as much mm. people who are like super serious about their job. And I'm just like, 
what are we supposed to do? Like, calm down. Like, why is everybody so hostile? Everybody so, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like I just never get to, and then again, the voice, the hi, how's it right? Nah, nah, nah. And it's just like, that gets tiring at the end of the day. Like, don't nobody want to do that all day. But do you, is there a difference between when you greet like customers versus with the staff? Um, I feel like it depends on the staff. I feel like the way mm. I greet people is almost the same way how I talk to certain people. Yeah. yeah. I think that's interesting though, because you have the podcast and a lot of them watch this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when we first started this and people are like, you uh -huh. are not right. who I thought right. you were. Oh, who's you? All right. Oh. And then they yeah. see this and I'm like, this, that person, I don't know who she is. When when I clock in, that's like a whole, that's, that's not me. Yeah. But then when y'all see this, like, this is me, you know? Oh, I know. And I think for, <laughs> uh, for the longest time, I was processing today. I'm about to share share my age real quick. Go ahead, share. <laughs> Next month, mm -hmm. I would have graduated college ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I said the what? Ten years ago, mm -hmm. but in that time, I've been trying to figure out who I am. I think in college was a big time where people defined me. Mm -hmm. and made me or i i created myself to be who they wanted me to be right and i went to a pwi a predominantly white institution and so to be safe there i think in a way i was i got called an oreo mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. right so to fit into what they wanted me to be um mm -hmm. and also trying to figure out who i am so moving to milwaukee four years ago now has been amazing. Yeah. Coming here, you know, hanging out here and shopping here and surrounding myself now with more black people. It's like, okay, I need more. I've been missing that yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I feel like growing up too, we grew up very hood adjacent. We were very, <laughs> <laughs> we were very like, <laughs> in it but not in it at right. the same time you yeah, know yeah, yeah yeah and then we would go home and like we went to a predominantly white middle school mm. i went to my high school was hbcu almost like lit literally and so going from middle school and just being around predominantly white people and then going to high school was like this is you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i feel like this is what i relate to this is my mm. people even though there's a lot of things that i liked and i've learned from their culture mm -hmm. i feel like I found myself a little like in high school, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then now, I feel like I didn't have to do the whole code switching thing when I was younger. I feel like I've now, as an adult, have gotten into that kind of certain people call, and I'm, hey, how you doing? And I, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, and I don't know, like, I don't know where that like kind of came from because I don't remember growing up having to do that. Oh. Yeah. Sounds like the. The spaces that you were in though you didn't have to yeah and i feel like now am i am i looking at it as if i feel like these people are like higher than me like i mm -hmm. feel like i need to you know what i mean yeah so i've been working i really have been working on like not doing that no more because i did really think about that like do i feel like i gotta not be me for right these and then do or... you want to be in that space yeah like that's i think that comes down to the bottom line like okay if i can't be my authentic self right now mm -hmm should i be here right it's just tough though because sometimes it's like am i gonna be fired though if i'm not but then you <laughs> because can't. hello yeah right because i'm going to hr yeah <laughs> straight there i'm, I'm going straight saying. there you know i'm just saying <laughs> no for real and i seen this video of this lady this is how it kind of came up in my mind mm. this lady was talking about how she was co-workers with this uh, lady who wanted to be her friend and because she made the boundary of like I just want to be coworkers. Like we don't have to hang out outside. She went to their manager. Like this lady is so mean to me and this and that. The manager had a meeting with her and was like, "I need you to make this right. I need you to." And it was even the lady is almost like that's. I didn't get hired for that. Right. And I shouldn't have to be forced to be friends with somebody to have my job. No. Because excuse me, I couldn't imagine having that meeting. Because <laughs> what. 
Are we being like for real right now? Yeah, are we but, playing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so am I supposed to pay for her meal too? Or what are we doing? Am I getting extra compensation for this? Extra time that I'm spending? Is for- this charity work? Maybe we should get rid of her. Cause she don't seem like she know how to focus on her job. She too busy focused on me. I mean, but is this supposed to be, is this a learning opportunity for her? Or what? But I ain't one. I'm really not in the industry of let teaching. Me, let me choose. You know what I mean? Students. You know? Oh, I know. And I, I don't choose you. <laughs> I don't choose you. Okay. <laughs> and I don't have to. Y'all not going to make me feel bad. <laughs> We're not choosing you. You know, I, so one thing is like my hair. Yes. Well, we talk about hair at work all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is a, a topic a lot. So I have to choose my battles at that time of like, okay, do I want to educate you? Because mm-hmm. I have been honest with folks. I just be like, yo, Google is at your fingertips. Yes. You look it up and then you can come to me and like, let's talk about what you learned and like tell you my experience. Mm-hmm. But I'm not trying to educate you on everything about locks. You know? And then it's after I tell you something, and then oh, the pure confusion not. of the answer, <laughs> which which was really not that deep, honestly. <laughs> and it's always the the follow up questions be the worst to me. Like the initial one, it'd be like, okay, you don't get it. But then the the follow ups, it'd be like, yep, mm-hmm. are we okay? Did you hear what I just said? Like, I don't understand the the pure confusion, and it really be confusion. Like they don't even be trying to be funny. That's true. But you got to read into it, though, because mm-hmm. sometimes they do be trying to be funny. That's true. And then the whole like people who approach me and I don't know if they feel like they're making me feel comfortable with the whole what's up, girl or the. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? You don't. you don't got to put on that whole act for me. Not for me, at least. Code switch. Uh, you know, but. But not that cold. Not. Uh, let's not. Let's not go there, with though, because I don't approach you like that. I don't come into work. What's up, my nigga? <laughs> I don't do that. So why are you? Why are you trying to shake up well, with me? Hey, would you try it though? I I might not call him a nigga, but yeah. I probably would. <laughs> Those I are probably people would. That come to mind. I'd love, love to see their reaction. Honestly, to that. I probably I might would have a little talk to if I did <laughs> to you, certain no, people. You, oh. To certain people. Oh. Yeah. Because what? Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. You're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> but through how I met you was uh through work. But then now I learned that, you know, you be modeling, you do your yoga. <laughs> Why are you turning off? <laughs> She trying to get to really? some stuff. Let me go to turn this off. You be modeling. You real into yoga and meditating and just your whole mindset. I feel like you are one of the people who I have around that's like very like intentional with what you, mm. what you do and like how you spend your time and stuff like that. If y'all don't know, uh, people who are watching this that don't know Savion personally, I don't know if it's just me, but he's very hard to get in contact with and... I just had to add that in there, but <laughs> but you I are. I am a uh, hard. I I respond a lot in my head, mm-hmm. and I read that text. I go, "Ooh, yes, sounds great." Put this on phone to the side, yeah. Instead of because I'll be like, "We doing this," and, and I'll be waiting. I'll be like, "I guess not." <laughs> I guess that my was phone enough. was on the charger today when you called me. And I, was I know because I, I was like, you know what, this would be faster. <laughs> This would be way I'm faster. I'm all about a phone call. <laughs> I am all about a phone call. Again, that age came through, mm-hmm. you know. So go ahead and give me that phone call. Okay, you know. Because I said this would be way the... faster than texting. And then I said, oh, <laughs> let, me, let me go back to. <laughs> let me just go ahead and go back <laughs> to. <laughs> Still didn't answer the phone. <laughs> I said, oh, all right. <laughs> I guess I'll just go. Listen, I don't know what be going on. You know, anyways, he real bad with that phone. I just had to get that out. <clears throat> but I wanted to get into that, though. Like, how and when did you kind of... First, let's get into the, your positive mindset, because I really want to get into that. And just how, like, where did the switch come? Or have you always been this? Or 
I actually what what we call now was it like had positive I was positively toxic. Mm-hmm. Everything was positive. Everything was turned into a positive. Right. Oh, it's cold and it's raining outside and like people complain. I go, Oh, but it's watering the grass. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like what's the spin on that? And I think it got to a plate where a point where people were just like complaining all the time. And that was just like really heavy for me. Um, I'm really into like energy work and like getting good vibes from people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how we connect a lot as well. And so I always tried to turn things into a positive and then found out like that's not good. You know, like let people sit in their sadness or whatever mm-hmm. emotion is happening. And that's that's what I had learned about myself. I always buried everything. Mm-hmm. I grew up, we weren't allowed to really express Same. a lot yes. of emotions, right? <clears throat> you get that whooping, it's like, stop crying, mm-hmm. go to your room. And it's like, <laughs> my ass is on fire. Hello? <laughs> like- <laughs> I'm mad right now because I didn't do shit. No, for, and then let me give you something to cry about. Ooh. You just fucking did. <laughs> so please. <laughs> Stop crying before I give you something to cry about. I'm not sure. You know, confusion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they wonder why we grow crazy because it's like. <laughs> so all this time, it's like, well, can't be angry. Can't be sad. Mm-hmm. Can't be upset. So I guess the only thing I can be is positive. Right. And after I graduated college, actually, it's probably like in college, I got super depressed junior year. Not a lot of people know this. Um, super depressed, skipping classes, was sleeping all the time. And ended up going to counseling for the first time that year, which was great. Mm-hmm. I was kind of forced to do so, uh, which was really good for me. Um, and through that, she called me out. She says, you be wearing a mask. Yeah. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> like, actually, I'm happy as fuck. Well, I'm just, well you're all crying. The time, what you <laughs> <laughs> Not while you're crying. Happy as hell right now. <laughs> World's on fire. No, Everything's fine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even that hot. Y'all yeah. <laughs> It was literally that. Exactly. And I was like, oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. I got like other emotions that I've just buried for so long. And when I ended up working at the university after I graduated, There'd be times where I did just want to feel the feels. Or I'm like, nothing's really, really sparking me to be at 100 in positivity. So, like, I don't know. I'm just chill, Mm -hmm. right? It may be the feeling of being high. Yeah. And so my, I have people come in like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm just here. Oh, you just haven't, you know been perky you know as usual right and that really made me <clears throat> sit with it of what what is this about and realized oh i am this like happy go lucky person all the time and so i had to channel those other emotions and let those other things come through so being positive yes i think there's a lot to be grateful for i would say it's more so that like i just live a life of gratitude there's sadness like there's a, a mentor and someone who worked at the college with me who passed away today, like 60, 60 years mm-hmm. old with liver failure. It's like, whoa. And teaching yoga is another part of that, being able to go into your body. And I just have people put their hand on their heart, hand on the belly, and just like feel your heartbeat, feel yourself breathe, and just know like you're alive. And that's really amazing. Like, when you think about what's happening across seas right now, mm-hmm. there's a lot of shit happening. Yeah. And we could walk around like <clears throat> super mad. The world is on fire. Absolutely. But then what does that, how does that lead into our day? Right. What kind of day does that bring us? How is going to counseling as as a black man? Like, but she, she was a white woman. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> But she's so kind. At that point, I could have used anything. Mm-hmm. And I think it was kind of also kind of giving me like motherly figure who's listening to me. Right. <clears throat> Not to diminish, you know, put my mom down. She, as they all say, you know, the best she can. With so many kids as okay. a single mom for a long time. It's just a lot to probably listen to 
<laughs> Everyone. All of us. Mm-hmm. So at that point, it's just like having someone to listen to me, which was really, really nice. I didn't have therapy for the longest time after that, probably 10 years mm-hmm. before going back. But I was really intentional with who I wanted to speak with. Because at that time, like 2018, 17, like police brutality was picking up or it's just like mm-hmm. on the news a lot more. And like black <clears throat> men being killed and black people in general. And that was really tough on me. And so 2018, I was having anxiety attacks every time I would see a police car or police police officer, which was wild yeah. to me to, again, have those emotions come up and be able to name them or just feel them and not put them under the rug. So I saw therapy again um, about 2020. That's when I got it again. I, and I really wanted a person of color. Mm-hmm which is, was hard to come by at the time. Um, but I'm not in therapy now, but therapy is really, it's really amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. I think for black people specifically, because we didn't have a lot of people to listen to us. Mm-hmm. I think we were quieted a lot. I agree. And I feel like I think I would benefit a lot from it, but I really like deep down inside. And I say this a lot. I have a problem with talking to people about serious things and I can feel that they don't care. Mm, so then right. I feel like I'm like, right. just, yeah, I'm either just keep it to myself. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because I know me personally, I feel like I carry around a lot of sadness, which comes from the griefs that I've right. experienced. And so I'm always like, you know, I'll just, you know, I don't know, pray about it. And mm. but then it's, um, almost, you know, it's like we were told that one, too. OK. And that's I feel like that's my dad now. Like mm. me as an adult, I feel like my dad is so like. He's he's not someone to like. All, his his advice is go to church to and to pray Same, and um, you still, know yeah. just do the right thing. It's like I don't I don't know what that is. And again, that's the problem. The, just the very just basic answers, and it's like I need help beyond just like what I think is the right thing to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I when I listen to your episodes, there's a lot of therapeutic moments here. With y'all sharing about family and about your grief, but there isn't that part where you get to, you get to express it, mm-hmm. but you don't get to like really reflect and sit in it, like you right. in therapy, and like have someone ask you those follow up questions to make you go a little bit deeper with it. This is actually very therapeutic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> surprisingly, you know. It but is, at yeah. the same, like we are having a conversation, we get to talk <clears throat> to each other. And again, that part of someone listening to you really is just like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, why not? Why not? Give Cause, more. Right? Yeah. Because here I feel like I can say it and then I'm like, well, I said it because that's what I feel or that's what I know. Mm-hmm. But it's not like me really thinking about it and really sitting in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, this is my experience. That's what happened. This is how I feel. And then, bye y'all. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> Literally. Like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I could really benefit from it i used to say everyone could and i think at one point or at some point in people's lives everyone can benefit from Mm -hmm. it it might not be right now but i think there's points where people can right and i feel like recently more recently um ty from Mm -hmm. uh work we've become really good friends and he's really like gotten me more into like my, how can I say it? More of my journey, how I say for you, how you're intentional with the things that you do. I feel like me and him talk a lot about the things that I say I want to do, even mm-hmm. like in my fitness journey. And it's almost like you say, you wish, you hope. Mm-hmm. And it's like, every time you start, you quit. Every time you start, you give up or you got to excuse you why. To yeah, okay. you know, and it's like, Oh, you give yourself all these, oh, I'm going out of town. So, and you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it always becomes an excuse of why why I'm not doing it or why I'm continuing to quit. And I feel like this has been like, almost, this whole year been like the longest thing that I've like continuously put my effort into. And I feel like this has become, this has like been giving me that push to, to con- well, continue, you know, to... Be intentional with my days. Be intentional with being 
authentic with mm-hmm. myself and telling the truth to myself before even getting on the mic. Like, you know what I mean? Understanding that I do carry all these things, but I have a lot more to offer than like the pain that I'm through. Mm-hmm. I feel like I can offer, you know, more than oh, that, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. I'm just sitting in that. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just. It was the look up for me, dude. <laughs> Jesus. <Okay. laughs> it was the. <laughs> you know, so that has been my my walk the last couple of months to be in more. But I feel like you, even though me, you never had that conversation. Me talking to you and being friends with you, and even following you on Instagram, seeing the stuff that you're spending your time doing, and then thinking back, like things that I'm always saying, oh, I want to get into this. Mm-hmm. I, I want my life to start moving in this direction. And I'm never making strides to go that way. I'm constantly choosing, you know, the wrong way or the wrong thing or wasting my time. You sure. know what I mean? I th- with you even saying, I want to do this, it, I think it starts to like, people start to turn the knob to the door. Mm-hmm. I really want to take this path. Turn the knob. But we're never pushing and mm-hmm. walking through and keeping with it. Part of the work that I do is health and wellness coaching. I'm like, I work with people in goal setting. <clears throat> and so I think that's also part of what I put on Instagram. And I mean, my tag or my handle is coach the soul. And so I, I not only live a life of being positive, but it's really about being grateful, being thankful, and trying to become our best self. And so when we set goals, it's like, I want people to set a goal that is taking them to their next level, Mm -hmm. to their highest being. And so, and sometimes it's, we need to get under the rug. We need to, okay, let's pull some of this stuff out. Right. To let it go, close that chapter walk through the yeah. next door because like i feel like i'm i twist the handle and then i open it and i'm like oh damn it's kind of hard or it I'm might be sleepy, pitch black in there or you know what i mean you know where the light switch and i said let's shut this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go on and close it and lay down yeah you know yeah like and that's that's typical mm-hmm. you know it's because it, sometimes it's the unknown right this is what i want but i don't even know how to get there mm-hmm. where what's the next step Sometimes it's just, well, we got to walk, walk in the door, take what you know already, mm-hmm. and run with that. Yeah. Podcasting. I know. Right? Yeah. It's like, I don't even know. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you need to do that you just know, but there might be research now involved mm-hmm. in where, what studio can I use? What equipment is necessary? What are people doing? Like, do I have a YouTube channel? Do I just do it on Spotify or on these other platforms? Right. Like, what's really important? Taking the steps, walking through the door, moving forward. Mm-hmm. That's everything. Yeah. I think at the beginning, too, of just, like, podcasting, I had a really bad, like, looking at the numbers and looking at the views, mm. the trends. And then um, this guy that I follow, his name is Phantom, um, He's like a YouTuber now, but he was talking about how we we think about things so small when it's like if there were 30 people sitting in this room, just they paid to watch me talk. That's something like. And, but on social media, we look at that like, oh, that's just 30 people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We mm-hmm. don't look at it as what it actually is. That's 30 that's- people that could be strangers. That could be my friends. You never know who you're touching with whatever you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Ooh, that, I like that. Yeah. You know, I'd be, I'd be really I like, like I feel like I've really been like intentional, even with changing like the people that I'm hanging out with or even my circles. I feel like sometimes when I talk or maybe people feel like I'm complaining about the work that it takes to do this podcast as like, why don't you just take a break? You don't got to do it every week. And it's like, that's, that's kind of not what I want to hear. I want people to say it'll, it's going to pay off. Keep working, keep grinding. You know what I mean? Like, who wants to keep hearing just just take a break like yeah. you know what i'm saying keep working like you know i never know where this is gonna take me and i enjoy doing it even though it's it's hard i enjoy doing it and it's like you know i don't feel like i need to stop or take a break 
let me complain and say I'm a little tired. Just say you're doing a good job. Keep going. You know? Did you see that on my Instagram story? No, today? Yeah. No. Are you talking to me? I was that. Wait. Was that? Listen, <laughs> I be putting stuff out there and I be like, this is ministering to somebody. Yeah. I feel it for myself. So I know this is for somebody else. It says, I think you should keep going just to see what happens. That was when you, I was meant to see that. I ain't see it yet, but I was meant to see it, you know? It's on here for 24 hours. You okay, need to I'm going to go back and look. Yeah. You get- <laughs> go ahead and save that. And I hear that a lot. And it's almost disappointing because a lot of people who say it to me aren't like people whose lives I would want to emulate. Mm. Or, you know what I mean? I don't feel like they've really put something out there, even not even social media, just anything, put something out into the world and really follow through with it. Mm. And I feel like those people are always the ones who are like, it's not that serious. Just, you know, yeah. it's okay to just, it's like, no, it's okay to keep going. Why would you not keep going until you don't have to? One day I won't have, I will never have to edit again one day. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, like you just, I really just never know. Yeah. And I, I'm in too deep now to, to want to quit, honestly. How many episodes we had? We had, uh, we had, how many we had? I think we had 35, I think. Yeah. This is getting crazy. Consistency. Mm-hmm. Surrounding yourself with the right people, though. That's big. Yeah. It's really important. Mm-hmm. People who's going to continue to build you up and tell you to keep going. Instead of just always talking that negative. Mm-hmm. You th- <laughs> There's, you know, people saying all the time, folks who want to see you in, there's folks who want to pull you down and not see you in. Yeah. We can't be, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But y'all, we're going to continue this conversation into next week. But before we go, y'all know I have to have Savion play. I know you fucking lying. So... Do you, you have one for me today? Or we going, I have one for you today. Okay. You want to go first or you want me to go first? How many? Look, y'all see he already know how to play. This is a true supporter many right here. Musical groups can you name? Mm, I can name six. Ooh. I can name seven. I can name eight. I know you're going to I ain't even going to put a timer up. Okay. Destiny Child. Mm-hmm. Um, Dream Girls. Oh, um, Ozzy Brothers. Okay. Um, the Gap Band. Um, Main Condition. Um, Kid and Play. Is that a group? That's a group. That's a duo. Yeah. Um. Damn. Uh. In Vogue. Mm. Um. Clark sisters. Come on, Clark sisters. Uh, <laughs> Kurt Franklin and the family. And the family. Okay. Was that was that <laughs> eight? Yeah, was eight. Okay, I know that's all right. And the family. Because <laughs> okay. all of them. Yeah. Tamala Man and her husband. All of them. I didn't even know that until I got ordered that they was in, in the awesome. group. Yeah. I said, you know, Kurt Franklin and the brown one. Okay. <laughs> okay. You already kind of exposed a little bit that you are a millennial and I am I am Gen Z. How many 90s or early 2000s children's shows he made? Oof. I'll start with five. Mm, I can name six. I can name seven. I know you think I'm lying. I can name seven. Rugrats. Recess. Mm-hmm. That's a Raven. That was a children's show. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, was that a child? You yeah. right. You right. You right. Who was the child? You're me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it count. It count. Yeah. <laughs> it count. It count. <laughs> oh dang! Um, mm-hmm. It get hard when you on the spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Ren and Stimpy. All Nickelodeon. That was all Nickelodeon. The Barney. Mm-hmm. Reading Rainbow. Yes. Sesame Street. Period. You know, when I first thought of this, I was 
straight Zaboom food came in my head. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, that was my shit. I don't even know what that was about. <laughs> like, I really don't remember what that was about at all. They were playing with a lemur, right? And that they was were. A- I mean, it was kind of weird. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Two For Mary podcast. Make sure y'all are subscribed to our YouTube that channel. Y'all listening to us on Apple Music, um, Spotify, everywhere, iHeart. Everywhere yeah, you can heart. find our yes, okay. We everywhere we international. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, y'all can find us everywhere. Make sure y'all um following us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and we will be back next week. Bye. Period. Nobody